section of um, the NYP Parents as Partners will be dealing with Manage Back. The curriculum model, so that you'll know what this beast NYP looks like for your child, and any questions that you might have, burning questions that you might have today, that you can't go home without an answer to this question. So you will have an opportunity, welcome please, you will have an opportunity to ask any questions at the end. I don't want to make it too long because the brain research says I won't keep the attention that long. So the plan is to um, keep it short and sharp um, and worthwhile and inform as informative as possible. So to start off with, the best place to start, I believe, is to introduce Miss Julie, who is our data manager. And she's going to just introduce you to Manage Back. And the reason we're starting with Manage Back is because it plays such an integral role in our communication about the curriculum. So everything you want to know about how your child is going will be accessed through Manage Back. And if you happen to talk to a teacher about your child's progress, the first question they will ask you is, have you been on Manage Back? Okay, so that is our first point of reference, Manage Back. And so we thought it was important to begin with to have you have a look at what Manage Back looks like. So Julie, I'll hand it over to you. So, um, returning parents should have already have access to Manage Back, but if you are a new parent, um, you should have received your Manage Back welcome email, I think it was last week, um, and hopefully it was easy enough for you to get on. If you haven't received your welcome email, um, at the end of the session maybe they could leave their names with you, Ms. Sharon, or my email and name is on the school website. You can send me an email and I'll make sure that you get logged on. Um, so Is anybody then... not received an email yet? Okay, so there's a couple of people. Great. We can organise that at the end of this session. Okay, so I'll just show you basically how to navigate to manage back today and what you'll be able to see. Um, this is just a demo school, so this is not our school. Obviously, at the beginning of the year, so our school won't have enough information to actually show you what it can look like. So, once you actually start um, and log on to Manage Back, this is your home page. And your home page will contain a two week summarized calendar which will have all of your children's events for the next two weeks and tasks summarized. And it will also have a little summarized section here of upcoming events and details and latest activity in your child's class. Now I have to mention that um, these items on the home page, you can't actually click on them, you can't see them. It's just to let you know that they have been posted. But the a child can see them. Yes. Um, you'll see there that some of them contain a little I at the end of it. So we'll see that, okay, um, an investigation was posted and that will tell you what it's about. And if a teacher has actually added any type of file, you'll be able to access it there and open it. And the bottom part, you can see which class posted that information. So this was grade 10 PE. And the same for this bottom section, it'll just by class tell you what the latest activity was so for PE for the IB. Obviously this child was in grade 10. Yes. So you won't get all the activities from the whole school, you only get the activities pertinent to your child dash children. Yes. Each one of your children will have that your own login for that for them. Yeah. Um, your own section for each child. Yes. So at the top here you'll see, um, right now we're on Rachel, Rachel is in grade 10, and you can switch between children if you have more than one. Okay. The second very important part is the calendar. If you click on this, this will open the full calendar for the year, and this will contain all the 
the events, all the tasks, anything that was posted on any class page, on any of the IB groups related to your child. Um, you'll see here that it gives you the color coding, so the blue is task, the green is investigation, and if I just scroll forward a little bit, there we see. Red means deadline. So usually when there's an assignment or a task posted, teacher will assign a deadline to when it needs to be submitted and it will appear on the calendar in red. And when you hover your mouse over it, you'll see the time that it needs to be handed in and a short message on which class. So there's no reason for you not to be aware every requirement that your child has in every subject. So no longer can they say, I have no homework. They may say that, but you can look on the calendar and say, yes, but you have this deadline due in five days. So perhaps you can start to work on that. Right now, there's not going to be very much there right now, but in a week or two weeks' time, you can bet there will be more things there. So this is the place, this is your secret weapon. Okay, so when they're trying to um, say, I've got nothing to do, Mum, Dad, then you can come here and check exactly what is coming up. And it could be at the end of the term, just before the winter break, there is nothing due. And you can check here and say, okay, I believe you, and, and know that what, are the, what the deadlines are. But it also helps you use this calendar to help your child manage their time and organise themselves. Because the worst thing they could be doing is doing this research on the 15th of September when it's due on the 16th. So this calendar helps you help your student the same as the parent and the teachers are helping your students get organised and manage their time better. And so I hope, I know that this is a really useful tool to our parents. They really, manage back has been extremely popular. Um, and it's used well, it can be a really excellent way for the school and, and yourselves and the children to be partners in this whole adventure that we call NYP. Um, Just quickly, the profile tab is just where you can upload your own personal information. You can add a picture, you can um, add a preferred name, you can add a um, mobile phone number. Now the email, you can change your email. Currently the email that was added to Manage Back was the one that you provided when you enrolled your children. But you are able to change it on here as well. Just know that if you do put mobile numbers and things, it is visible to everybody that uses Manage Back. So other parents can see your profile. It's a bit like Facebook, I suppose. They can see your number. They can see anything you put on this section here. And then on the side, you'll notice that it just summarizes um, all the children that are assigned to you and their um, details. And the academics tab is a very important section. Um, it will show you all the classes of the child that you're currently looking at. Um, it'll also give you the section on the side with key contact information for that specific child. So uh, for if you have a child in NYP, it should have the key contacts for the children in, in that grade, and DP will have different contacts. Um, you can easily click on the email and send um, any teacher or anybody really from Manage Back an email directly when you click on their email. And um, on the side here you'll see that there's a reports tab. So this is where you'll find your child's report card because we do report cards on Manage Back and they're published electronically. So at the end of semester one you'll receive an email and it'll say that the report card has been posted on Manage Back would log on and you would find the report on here. <coughs> you can open it and save it, have a look at it. Okay. Uh, 
if we just go back to the classes here. Um, you can click on a specific class to take a look at it. You'll see that there's two tabs under each class. The units tab, which will give you the information regarding the curriculum, the current unit that they're doing, and um, the key concepts and inquiry questions. So everything that they're doing right now on that subject, you'll be able to see. And also, the second tab is the task tab. Teachers will add tasks, and then once the students have completed those tasks and the deadline has passed, they add the grades for the tasks. So you'll see here that for the specific task for criteria B, the student received a 7 out of 8. And teachers can, in some cases, write little comments to say how the child did in that specific task. And most, most often teachers will make a comment about how the student has gone. And then on the side here for the specific um, criteria, you'll see that it'll give you the grade descriptors. So you'll be able to see what the 7 out of 8 actually means for that specific task. Okay, and you can do that for all of the classes that your child is Listed in. I've just shown you one example. And then at the bottom of the page, it will show you a summary of how your child is doing in their community and service. So it will it'll just tell you the overall progress that they're on track with their community and service, how many of the learning outcomes they've achieved, and what activities they've actually added to their manage back that they've So you can tell by that, that there's no time, no opportunity for parents to come to us and say, we didn't know, if you chose the graph for a second, is it possible? Uh, I didn't know my child wasn't doing well. That child's doing very well. <laughs> As you can see, they're getting a lot of eight out of eights. But you know, if your child is getting two or three out of eight for their tasks, then it's a concern and you will know that they're not doing so well and you will be able to contact the teachers and be able to make interview times to discuss what needs to happen. At all times, you'll be aware in each subject how your student is achieving as tasks are completed. Question, yes. So the, all the teachers are really good about posting stuff in a timely manner? In a timely manner. Some of our teachers have eight different classes. Um, they're a language B teacher, for example, they'll come across eight classes. So it might take them a week or so to get that information on. I encourage my teachers to get on the level of achievement. They have to add the comments later, at least we have the level of achievement up. Um, but yeah, in a timely manner, that will be there. And if it's not, I'd like to know because I can't troll through all of Manage Back. So if you notice that there is a subject you're not getting sufficient feedback on, just please drop me a line. I'm okay. more than happy to know that because it could be that that teacher needs support okay. and I, I need to give them that support. Yeah? Okay. So please don't hesitate. Uh, oh, I'd just like to mention while we're still on this section here, um, you'll notice that the teacher who posted the task, their details will be right on the side of task here so you can contact them as well regarding that specific task. So I received an email from a parent um, to say how do I contact my teachers, my students, my child's teachers. This is how you can contact the teachers. So it's on email. It yes, me. I couldn't see the email. Okay, so but maybe... It's on the academics and I have all the academics and, and the name of the teacher but no contact details. So. Okay. Have another look and see once things are updated. But these are a new family, Stephanie's in grade 10, and so maybe we don't have Stephanie on the system yet because they're new. It takes too little a while to get all the new students on, and it will, it will look like this. Yeah. Okay, and the last uh, tab I'll show you is the IB page, which is all parents in the school that use ManageBack. And um, 
will sometimes teachers or the admin will post announcements on here for parents because um, this is basically where we can communicate with you as the parents. So, um, some of you might have noticed that we did post individual music lessons announcement on there the other day. So you'll find things like that. Parents themselves can actually post messages on here, like if you need to ask something, you can post it on here. Um, I never go there. And then, of course, um, if you click on your name in the top hand corner, you're able to change your password at the bottom. And Manage Back has a very, very brilliant help section. If you ever want to know how to do something, you're stuck. In the right hand side there, if you click on help, it actually has divided it up into sections. So for example, um, I want to know how to view my child's academic progress. It'll tell you and it'll actually show you where to go and give you step by step. So it's really helpful. So if you ever get stuck, just Are there any questions? This is just my FYP. Yes. So if I have a child in QIP, it will not be. And deeply as well. Um, the, yeah, 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 the yeah, school, yeah. How much of this do the children see? The children? Yeah. The children see a lot more than parents actually. Oh, really? yes. yes. They, they see all of that plus. They see everything plus they have some additional features. For example, if we just go back to um, this section here where you, for example, only see a summarized version of that, they are able to see and open all messages that are posted on the class page. They can access all files that are added by a teacher. They can upload files into the Dropbox for the teacher to get and mark and send back to them. So they've got some additional features to parents. If they have more access, the kids call this school Facebook. That's what the little name for which is which fills me with the hope because it means they like it um, and that, that they use it and actually they're the ones that drive the pet, the teachers because it's like, is it a manager? Yeah. Yes, well, it's not a manager. I'm not good at it. You know what I mean? So like they <laughs> really do use it for the good um, and so it's a real um, tool that is valuable. Children have been, I, I think they are constantly reminded and especially the grade sixes with Charlie's doing an excellent job getting them into the habit of working with manage back. So if there's anything that maybe they have, they should share that with you if you can't access it. But teachers have also been made aware that certain things should be posted in places where parents as well as students can access it, not only students. So it's okay to just check your own Facebook. Uh, manager. <laughs> 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 we see we at school. Yes. Um, yes, just to say, uh, the two can chat together on this. And uh, any messages go from child to another with a school can back messages or... I don't know if they send messages to each other. They don't send messages to each Not other, no. It's communication between teacher and student. Okay. I don't think it's other than no messages or chat. No, there is no chat, there's no private messages. Okay. Any messages that are actually posted on here is public. So the message they post would appear on the class page and the teacher and everybody can see it. There's no private messages. So my son was trying to get on yesterday but he didn't have a password, he didn't know how to log in. And he's never Yes, they should have received the welcome email. I mean, if he's, is he grade six? Okay. Good email. Yes. Miss Charlie is working with them in groups to help them get on. Like she actually sits with them and says, okay, take your welcome email, do this with it, do that with it. So it, yesterday I was still loading 
the last few of the grade sixes into the system, so he might be in the last bunch. I know it's Charlie just caught me in the foyer here and said, I still need to do this and this and this, so we're getting everybody on it. Definitely by the end of the week, everybody should be on it. They don't have textbooks for what subjects. So, is there any ebooks about what subjects? No, that's not. No, we don't have textbooks for NYP. There is no such thing as a textbook. So, there are no ebooks. There, and it's a concept-driven curriculum. Only maths, uh, English, whatever they are yeah. having. Uh, the maths, they, the the maths, they do have a textbook, um, but but it's just science. a hard copy. Um, no. The, the teachers um, pull resources from all over the place to teach the unit. It's not done out of one book. Here's my question for you about textbooks. If we were to choose a textbook, which would we choose? An American curriculum textbook, a British curriculum textbook, an Australian curriculum textbook, a New Zealand curriculum textbook, a Canadian curriculum textbook? None of those fit us. We're an international school. So as a result, our teachers pull from different resources. So for example, humanities at the moment, we looked at two pages of this yesterday in 80 minutes. And the rest of the time I had other resources, yeah, I, mean, I had can videos. Post these two pages, so we can work with our child at home, you know what I mean? Uh, that would, we don't know what they are doing at school, so we need to help them at home. Sure. That would be a very arduous task for teachers to have to scan every page they're teaching from in an 80 minute lesson, four lessons a day. That would be too much for me to ask teachers to do that. Then that how we can help our child? Well, they've got notes in their notebooks and, and they know what the unit title is and they're in secondary school and they should be independently yeah, working. They should be. <laughs> they should be independently working. So that's, that's what we expect in, in the NYP for them to be able to do that. So it's not any more, you know, of course, if you have any concerns or problems, then you can always um, contact the teacher. But we're expecting to work through this stuff um, independently, and there are no books as such to follow. That's not what our program is about. Yeah. Another yeah. question? Yes. Yeah, can you know what they will be learning in this classic uh, school year? Sure. In it's in the. Having the if you know what they are going to learn. Sure. On the website, yeah. um, the curriculum handbooks are posted for every grade. So from grade six, www.ris.ae, the school website. On the school website, the curriculum handbooks are published, and in there it describes what's happening throughout the year for each subject. Yeah, that's great. Any other management questions? Oh, there, it's well done. Any other management questions while we've got to leave it? Yes. Yeah, um, I tried to put the management app on my phone, and it said it wasn't Yes, that, that's an issue that we are aware of. Um, currently, we're not able to run the app with our school. Okay. Um, so the manage back developers said that they would work on that, but they didn't give me a timeline as to when. Okay, I just didn't know what it was meaning. No, no. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and currently there's only one way to access it, and that's through the school year account. Okay, and my second question... So you mentioned the message about private music lessons. So I went to Manage Back and I didn't realize, it's good to know that in the overview you can't click and open it. But so if I want to read the whole thing, where do I go? It should mention in the email where that was posted. That specifically so just was it via the email. Yes. Okay. And it was posted in the IB Parents Association, which okay. is the group on the yeah. right hand side. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Would everybody be able to see each other's results or that's no, no, definitely not. No. It's not open. It's just um, it's not an open communication. It's just an individual student and parent knows that information. No one else sees that information. That would not be right. Yeah. Any other questions about manage back? Great. Thank you, Julie. Uh, one more. Yeah. We're supposed to see all the tabs because I can't see attendance now. Um, our, our school, we don't do attendance on Manage Back. We use another system. So we don't have the functionality of attendance on Manage Back. Mm -hmm. 
but you will get uh, attendance every semester in the report part. And if your child's going to school, you'll be found. So you'll okay. know um, if they're here at school or not. They, they, we take attendance. I was this morning doing my advisory class. Anyone who is marked as absent on that advisory class, the parents of that child are phoned to ensure that they are in fact at home and not lost somewhere on the way to school. So that's a safety issue that the school has undertaken. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much, Julie. So you can see why we started with the yeah, question. Yeah, my son is in grade six, and does, does he have his own uh, ID and password? Yes. So he can log in with that's the same. Correct. Yes. Yesterday he tried, but he couldn't. Okay, so Miss Charlie, the dean of grade six, yeah. is working with the 125 students of grade six individually to get them all on lineage back. So she's conducting individual sort of tutorials per class mm. to make sure they know how to use okay. it. Okay. So that will that will come. At the moment, there won't be anything there for grade six because grade six have been given a two week grace of no assessment tasks or no homework, just while they, while they get over the shell shock of joining the secondary school. Um, so you, they're not missing out on anything yet. So don't, don't panic about that. Yeah. Just one more question. Yeah. Uh, for example, if I walk to walk my child off, he's going to get in Grade 6. I go to Academy and then I press the math uh, math lesson and I should find there uh, which lesson I'm taking now or that. It's not that much, it's not that detailed. It's got quite a few that they're studying at the moment. It's got what they're studying now. Yes, the few that they're doing. They're and doing. Example, if they're adding number now, I see the adding number. Yes, that's correct. Not any detail. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. 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 Grade six, yeah. what grade? Grade six will always be in the agenda. It's definitely in the agenda. It also, will be on manage back, especially the assessment tasks. So, if a teacher has said, "I want you to read the next page for tomorrow's lesson," they might not necessarily get that every single time on the manage back. But in grade six, it will definitely be in the agenda. That, that's one of the things that our grade six teachers take on board to ensure that that is in the agenda. So the students being taught how to keep track of their the events that are happening in their lives. So the agenda is an important tool for that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, is there a minimum amount of time uh, before you post the assessment, like the week is that? Yes. As soon as the assessment <coughs> is set, it will be posted. You just check. There's no email sent every time something is posted, so you just have a check. Yeah. Is there a week? So, for example, yesterday I set my first task in grade seven, and the assessment task was posted. As I set the task, I show the students the task, and I put that task on to manage back. Okay. So is that a week? Or I like to plan a week. It, 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 will be, it would most probably be at least a week in advance, if not longer. So you'll be able to see to see that, and they'll be able to be told what's what this, the time frame is. Yeah. Yeah. So if we have an essay and we see that up there, how do we know when it's due? It'll or be on the calendar. Or we go on the information. Yeah. We'll see that this is the essay. Okay. And. Uh, just below the title, you'll see 9 a.m. on October 8. Or here, it'll be the same thing, 9 a.m. on October 8. That's what it's due. That's the deadline. So it comes up on the, the deadline is what comes up on the calendar, not the day it's posted. Yeah. And so if your child's sick for a few days, and how would they get their homework? I mean, does the teacher have? Would she scan whatever they learned since mm -hmm. it's not in there? Not necessarily. So there's no way the teachers can do that. Like they can't. So I can't just come get home. He just kind of. Um, no, if they're away for a number of days, three or four days, then you can certainly contact the teacher and they can do their best to accommodate what is happening in class. If an assessment has already been set, okay, your child so will know that much. assessment. They can work on that assessment. But as far as what they can. Um, cover 
It's, it's the different beast of secondary to primary school. Okay. okay, so teachers have four classes a day. So they have 20 questions coming through to five minutes apart. They don't necessarily get to do that individual attention of having 25 students for the whole day like they do in, in the primary school. So it's the transition for them and for us and for you to get over that, that there's not going to be that one teacher that knows my child as well as a primary school teacher knows their children. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of a learning curve for, for everyone. But certainly if they're away a week and you're concerned about the work they're missing, lots of parents will email the teacher and say, we're away the week, please let us know what we need to do to catch up. And the teacher will email them back. No other questions about Manage Back? No. Thank you, Joy. That's great. So we started with that. Even though Manage Back is not NYP, it, is, um, it was devised by an IB diploma graduate. And so he knew the need for this type of communication portal. And he um, has made a lot of money out of it. So that's fantastic. And there's many IP schools around the world who are using ManageBat because it's designed specifically <coughs> for the NYP and the diploma with the criteria. So it's very much an IB platform, which is handy for us all. Before that, it was an issue um, about communicating with parents exactly what was happening. So just one more thing I want to do today, I don't want to overload you all, but I really appreciate that you're here. I can't believe there's so many people. Last year I had six people. So I'm sorry I didn't have enough chairs. I wasn't expecting um, the volume, but that's fantastic that everyone's so interested. Um, now that everyone's here, my name is Sharon Thompson, and I'm the NYP coordinator here at um, Braham International School. Um, this is my fifth year in the school, and my 15th as an NYP coordinator. Um, so I have experience, unfortunately. <laughs> Lots of it in um, multiple schools. We were in Indonesia first, and we were in Portugal, the South Third School. And I also work for the IB, so I'm an IB educator. So I go up to schools and I authorise schools and I inspect schools to ensure that they're doing the right thing for the IB and I lead workshops and I consult schools around the world in the NYP. So I want you to feel sort of I'm confident that you're in good hands with the NYP. So it's not that the NYP is not done well at the school, it's just a matter of you and the students learning what that means. That's what these sessions are about. Um, our inspection last year from the IV when they came in was glowing. Um, that we were commended on, a num on, on 19 different aspects of, of the NYP at the school and we only received something like seven recommendations, things that we could do better which we can then work on which is good. So the NYP is in a healthy shape here, um, I'm pleased to say, and we've had that ratified by an outside agency coming in last year, so it's just not my personal opinion. Um, so we do it well and we do it, we do it right, it doesn't mean it's easy to understand necessarily. It's a new curriculum framework for many of you, and I want you to feel confident that your students will be led the, all the way through what those expectations are. I want you to just take a deep breath. It's week two. Not everything will be clear at this point in time, but it will become clear, and at any time you're feeling nervous, you just have to contact myself or the deans. Paul was in here just a moment ago and he's had to leave. Obviously we have a new deputy head of the secondary school, Paul E. We have a new head of secondary school, Miss Catherine Sims. Fantastic leaders who are doing a great job um, setting up for this year. Um, and so you know, it's just a matter of you guys getting comfortable with what this means to have a student in the middle years program. So what I've done at the start is just to pull up the program model. And this sort of encapsulates what the NYP is, how it's structured, I suppose, is what this is about. And the, the beauty of this, and the, thing, the reason why I'm so passionate about the NYP, is right at the centre of this curriculum model is the student. So everything we do 
is about the student. It's a student-centered program, very similar to the PYP. The PYP program model has exactly the same thing as center. It's a student-centered program. So we're not interested in league tables, in, in national tests. We don't have to um, meet those types of criteria. We have to worry about what's best for the student. So whenever a question occurs, it's what's best for the student is the question that we ask. So that's wonderful that we have that freedom to be able to meet the needs of our students. We will go through approaches to learning, global context, approaches to teaching and concepts in subsequent training sessions. They're things that we will be discussing. We'll also be discussing the personal project and action service in subsequent <coughs> um, information sessions. Um, but today, really, what I would like to talk about are the subjects that your teacher, your students are actually participating in as we speak right now. So you can understand what that means in the MYP. So the students have a four-period day of 18 minutes, except for a Tuesday, which are four periods of 65 minutes. Um, and they will come across each one of these subjects in a two-week timetable. So there's week one and there's week two. So they'll have language and literature. For those people who were here last year, that's called language A. Language. This year is the launch of the next chapter. So these names have changed from last year. So there is a change this year for the NYP. It's called NYP the next chapter and some changes have occurred. So the names of the subjects are one thing that has changed. So language and literature is our language A which is English, and if you're a native Arabic speaker, it's Arabic. So our Arabic speakers do um, language A English and language A Arabic. So they do two language and literature subjects. The Arabic speakers will do two lots of Arabic because we have ministry requirements that they must meet and we have MYP requirements. So our language A Arabic students do not go to French. They have double dose of Arabic in order to get through the ministry requirements and of the MYP office. So that's a little bit different for our language A Arabic students. Then we have individuals and societies, which is the old humanities, and that's where we study history and geography, and we have economic concepts drawn into those. Then we have mathematics, which you all would know what that is. In grade 9 and 10, the students are streamed in mathematics and they're able to take an extended mathematics class if the teachers decide that's what is the best thing for the students. Then we have design, and this is the old technology, which is um, now digital design and product design. So for half the year, they'll be working mainly on computers doing digital design. The other half of the year, they'll be working in the lab doing product design. <coughs> and they use a design cycle for that. It's one of our most popular subjects, kids learning really about design. Then we have arts. So for the arts, they participate in performing arts and visual arts. So they'll have a visual arts class once a week all year. And half the year, they'll do a drama class for one, one one lesson a week and the other half of the year they'll do a music class. Up until grade nine, where they can decide, okay, I'm really good at visual arts, I'm going to specialise in that, and they just take visual arts for the last two years, or they just take drama. So it's only in grade seven, six, seven, and eight, they have this carousel, have a try of everything, and then in nine and ten they're able to specify what they want to do. And that helps them to go into the diploma if they want to go into the diploma in a, with an art subject. They've got that specific training happening there. Um, sciences, so they'll do physics units, chemistry units, biology units, environmental units throughout the year with the same teacher. Anyone in grade 10 here? Okay, in grade 10, their teachers have carousel this year, so they'll do eight weeks with the physics teacher, then they'll change teacher, do eight weeks with the chemistry teacher, then change teacher, do eight weeks with the physics teacher, and then eight weeks with the environment teacher. So that's deliberate because those teachers teach the diploma, and by that they'll go from grade 10 into the diploma with that specialist teacher's 
insight into what is needed in the diploma. Everything we do in the NYP is leading to our diploma program. It's a training ground to make sure that we're successful in the diploma, which is the business end of the deal, where they get accepted with the university and happens from the diploma. So we have to make sure that they're equipped to be, do well in the diploma. Then we have physical and health education, which they have four lessons of in a two-week cycle. And then we have language acquisition. At our school, that's French and Arabic. The ministry requires all students to study Arabic, so there's no choice in that matter. And then our students choose to do French as well. So this subject is the old language B subject, and it's divided up into phases. So the very beginners in Arabic, for example, are in phase one where they usually stay for a year, and then phase two, they may stay for two years, phase three, etc. So they go up through phases in the, in the language acquisition, which makes sense in an international school, because we're going to have students who have come from other Arabic countries, who maybe speak a little bit of Arabic already from that country, so we have to phase that language acquisition. So they're the eight subjects that we, we run. One of the, a little bit confusing, but I'm going to try and explain it. Um, maths, Humanities, Language A and Science all get five lessons in a two-week cycle. One of those lessons is split in half, and our Islamic students go to Islamic at that time. And the students who are the non-Islamic students um, have a, a homework study free 40 minutes to do work under the direction of their classroom teacher. But there's no actual active teaching happening while the Islamic students are out of the class. So that's sort of a little thing just for the UAE, um, which makes us special. So you might see on the timetable math slash Islamic, that's what that means, it's that half Islamic. That happens four times in a two week cycle. Any questions about the subjects that we, we cover? Oh, well, that's pretty easy. Um, yes. When do they have swimming lessons? The in swimming, it will be part of the PE program, and that's timetable according to facilities. So each year group will have a swimming unit, and that will happen as part of their PE program. And how do they get the fourth the, the PE teachers will tell them when that's happening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my son is in grade six and he's Arabic, so he only knows English Arabic. Yes. He doesn't have the opportunity to do any other language. No, that's correct. Do all MYP or only the All MYP. Okay. Yeah. And uh, if he's Arabic with another nationality. Yes, that's correct. Um, some of our students who are, have different passports um, approach the ministry and get exception from Arabic A, and they do Arabic B, and then when they do Arabic B, the second language learning Arabic, or Arabic for foreigners, if you want to call it that, then they're able to do French as well. Arabic and French. Yeah, but, but the, that Arabic class is for my kids learning Arabic, but they can do it at a higher level, phase three. Some of, our, some of our students have never lived in their home country and do only speak Arabic at home and do not do very well at writing and reading Arabic, and Arabic B is the best thing for them. No, no, I want them to do Arabic A, but I find it's not fair that he doesn't speak Spanish. Sure. So if you know that Spanish, you need to talk in Spanish. So I find I it's really unfair. We made the changes four years ago. And he doesn't have other passports. Yeah. Yeah, we had um, this controversy four years ago and we made the decision about what was best for the student. And this is best for the student because they have a, a large ministry requirement and then they have the MYP literature component and it wasn't good for their language structures to have both of those things in four lessons a fortnight. So the best thing for the student was for them to have this structure. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. We have mother tongue French classes, that's correct. Yeah. Yes. Language A would be Arabic, not English? Both. Arabic and English. Oh, so it would be the same level, let's say, or that's correct. That's correct. At the end of the mark of the Arabic, the same as English. Definitely, yes. 
Well, they get a better mark in English and they get a lesser mark in, in Arabic. No. Um, individuals are looked at on a case-by-case -case scenario, but you really do have to have another passport to approach the ministry and to go... No, that's correct. If your child is um, classified as a someone from the UAE, they, they would be expected to do language A Arabic. Not, they call it language Arabic for foreigners in the ministry, the language B. Um, so it's so up to get, to get exceptions. Some of our students get exceptions. We have Emirati students who have lived overseas for the majority of their life. So they come back and they're able to do language for foreigners, Arabic for foreigners. But um, it depends on each individual case. School. There's a form that you can fill in. We have a ministry liaison person, Miss Munira, and she has the form that she can take into Adam for, for us. There's a system that we, we can use, so we're lucky to have that person's liaison for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Do you have a music in the program? Yes, this is in the arts. Okay. So they're going to do a semester of music in grade six. They'll do one lesson a week of music for six months and then they'll swap it for drama. And then of course we always have the individual private music lessons. Do you have students. like after school program? The private ones are during class, but do you have like an after school? Not at this point in time. There may be an ECP offered for a band that our music teacher is trying to develop, but at this point in time there's no actual music lessons, like instrumental lessons after school, except for the private ones. Right, we have a Okay, is that for primary or for secondary as well? Yes, in the four program. Okay, great. They are staying, so for example, my humanities class on Thursday, halfway through the lesson, our Islamic students will leave the room to go to class, and the other half will stay with me, and they'll do silent reading, they'll do homework, they'll do some study, they'll do some work on an assessment task, it's just private study time. They are going to advise the room? No, they stay with me, they stay in the classroom with that teacher. We don't have any option for the other language, but non-Muslim students. Can we choose um, only French? That's correct. No other language. That's correct. At this point in time, yeah. We certainly are getting big enough to look at um, our language B offerings, and that is something that Miss Catherine is looking at. She's interested in trying to expand our language B options. Um, so that's exciting. But at the moment, it's French and Arabic. That's sort of enough for most kids at this point in time, yeah. Any other questions? I've kept you too long, I'm sorry. It's already another question. Yes. How many levels do you have? Uh, three, depending on the year. Up until grade 10, we have four phases already for French. But the other younger grades, the problem is we have native French speakers in our classes. And so the teachers try their best to accommodate them and to differentiate, give them extra activities to keep their French. Do they stay there all year or are they... Uh, uh, most of the they'll stay there all the year and usually at the end of the year they'll go up. Unless they've been placed in the wrong phase at the beginning, they'll be quickly changed. <coughs> um, but yeah, mostly it's for the year they'll stay there. Yeah. Yes? For those who don't have a password for management, you're adding a list? Yes, there's a list just here okay. for parents' emails and the child's name and what grade we... Thank you very much. I'll be available here if you have any further questions. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you very much. And we're back again next week at the same time, same place. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you.